to uh, follow up the last message with another balance, the balancing word. I'm talking about, when I talk about the sweet spot in the Christian life and the resonance of agreeing with the Father, I'm talking about our fellowship with the Lord. For me, that's the only thing that matters. All the rest of my life can be a complete chaos. But if I know that I have fellowship with the Lord and can access Him, I can pretty much yield to anything and deal with anything. Paul said, I know how to abase and abound. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, someone emailed me, uh, kind of like, you know, at responding to my message about the sweet spot saying, look, I've got a kid that's out of control and, and it's so hard. And Well, I'll be honest. I have a kid who is seven and he's got sensory issues and ADHD, and he's really hitting a wall, and f it is very frustrating. He is so picky about everything he eats because of the textures, and it, if it's if the bread is too crunchy, or if it, I mean almost anything you make for him, he's not going to eat. Dinner time is always warfare. Uh, he's in, he's very smart, and he's becoming increasingly oppositional and argumentative. Okay, and there's some yelling going on in my house. My wife doesn't put up with it. So it can be really agitating. Um, and, and I'm just comparing my situation to that one because this person said, you know, I've got a 13 year old. There's no sweet spot. It is so hard. Yeah, I'm not talking about life in terms of we've got all these practical situations around us that, that can disturb us. And so we don't feel like we're in the sweet spot. That's life. And those things are there to make us conscious of our need. The Lord, what we do have, though, is a basic ability to acknowledge God's sovereignty. That even though my situation with my kid is so difficult and it produces such turmoil, I know that's for my good. God works all things together for my good. And I know what my good is. My good is to gain Christ. If I say he's working all things together for my good, I know that my kid and my wife going at it at dinner produces in me an agitation that causes me to realize I need Jesus. And so it turns me to him. Now, if I'm not clear that God's will is for me to gain Christ, but I think God's will is to fix my situation, then I'll never have peace. Because that situation is going to go on and on. <laughs> My stepson, who's 18, has Asperger's. And I know from experience that this is the way it's going to be. In a lot of ways, we're always going to be dealing with, you know, special needs stuff, you know. Um, uh, so, the anxiety comes, though, when you believe that it is a reflection on your parenting and that you are a failure as a parent and you get under condemnation and you let that interfere with your perspective of God's working in your life. And that's what we can solve. I can't change the situation. Okay, I can't fix my kid. Uh, and he doesn't need fixing. He is who he is. All I can do is yield in the situation. And yes, the Lord gives me wisdom moment by moment to deal with it each day. You know, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it tomorrow. But see, I trust the Lord. The more, if I'm walking in the spirit and I'm resting in the Lord, then when the situation comes from, comes up, I'm not responding out of my agitation and sense of personal failure as a parent and the condemnation that it brings, which I think is, a lot of times my wife responds from that place. Uh, when she is disciplining him or trying to deal with him about his eating, she's thinking about how in the school cafeteria, she's a teacher and he's a kid there. Uh, and he won't eat and he's being all picky. And the, kid, the parents or the teachers are saying, what's wrong with your kid? And she feels like that reflects on her parenting. That sometimes tempts her. She's tempted to get out of her position in Christ and think about it that way, which then agitates her. 
so that she is now in the flesh when she's trying to deal with him. Totally uh, irrespective of God. You know, you're just dealing with it. Well, that a lot of agitation comes from that. But peace comes from knowing, look, we live in a fallen world and we are sinners. We are broken, but God's redemption is in my life. Christ is in my life. I know everything's going to turn out okay. I used to be afraid that my now 18-year-old was going to turn out just, I had all kinds of fears. And he turned out quite fine. He's a 4.0 school student with a full ride to college, and he's going to be He's going to be good. He's a good kid. And I can't take responsibility for that. That is God's shaping in his life and faithfulness. And I know he'll do the same with my son, even though there's all kinds of problems. You know, I have this basic inward knowledge from the word that it's going to be okay. Um, That makes the turmoil survivable. (laughs) But I don't want you to get the idea that I'm saying there's this mystical sweet spot in the Christian life where you nothing bothers you and you are on a cloud and then singing with the vacuum cleaner and resonating with the Holy Spirit and it's just this symphony with the... that I'm talking about in your basic relationship with the Lord. That's what the Lord wants to sweeten. Um, and I just got the picture of the bitter waters that were made sweet at Mara. There, the children of Israel were thirsty in the wilderness. In the wilderness, which is kind of a picture of our life, the only thing to eat and drink is Christ. And the water is a picture of Christ. And the bread is a picture of Christ, right? And uh, the water was bitter. They hadn't drank, eaten and drank for quite a while, and they were starting to freak out. And they hit this spring of water where it was bitter, so they couldn't drink it. So God had Moses put the, a tree in the water. It's a picture of the cross. And the bitter waters became sweet so they could drink it. Okay, Sometimes that's the way the Lord does it. My life and my situations are like the bitter waters that need to be sweetened um, to be palatable. you know. And I put the cross in there. And the cross is I'm crucified, which is the end of my responsibility for this thing. Christ has taken responsibility for my family. He, I am redeemed. I am blessed. I am in Christ. And even though I have these afflictions and even though we have this turmoil, I'm not being judged for my performance related to these things. I'm doing the best I can. You know, out of my new nature, I love my son and I'm, I love my family. And do I know how to handle everything? No, but I know how to lean on the Lord and believe that he is for me and not against me. And I believe every day he's going to give me whatever wisdom I need in that day to deal with my kid. But it's really my father giving the increase and shaping my kid. Really, Christ has taken responsibility. Um, And that gives me peace. That doesn't mean I'm not agitated when there's yelling at the dinner table. Okay? But that agitation is my bitter waters. And my answer is Christ. And, you know... A lot of time I get up and go to the restroom and just pray or whatever. I mean, I just get my mind off. Usually after dinner, I'm thinking about doing another video or something. I get myself back to what I enjoy, you know. Uh, what are you going to do? So no, the, 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 the sweet spot of the Christian life is not a cure-all for all the situations around you and the agitation it produces. But the realization that there is a sweet spot causes me to run to him and know where my help comes from and in my relationship with him and because of my relationship with him I see everything different I know that my son there's a limit to how bad that's going to get because I'm I'm resting in Christ and I know and it even you know no matter how bad it got I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me you know, I, I don't have the ability to control everybody around me and control everything um, or fix everything. All I can do is yield to God in the situation. And the people who are blessed are those who know how to do that. And the people who are not, who lose their sense of blessing and are frustrated are those who don't know how to yield in those situations. Even when you're exploding, like sometimes I lose it with my kid. 
And sometimes it's not my wife, it's me that loses it. I don't get all under condemnation about it. You know, I'll apologize to him if I need to, if I was, out, if I was too extreme. And I might worry about it a little bit. But my home is Christ. I always go back home. And he always brings me back home. And the more I know about Christ and his faithfulness, the broader that place is for me. And the more it includes so many areas of my life, and I'm able to see them in his care. You know, the misery in the Christian life comes from not seeing God's care in everything. Not being able to trust him in everything. It's our unbelief. And so that produces judgment, you know, uh, agitation and fear and condemnation. And condemnation is rooted in the sense of our own performance in this subject. You know, if I think it's all on my shoulders, then I take responsibility for my kid being a sinner. No, he's a sinner because we fell. Adam sinned. We're all sinners. We're all broken. We all need the blood. I'm not going to be able to raise a kid who doesn't need the blood. <laughs> you know, who doesn't need Jesus dying for him because he is that uh, worthy of death. That's what we are. So don't be idealistic about the human condition. Agree with God's judgment on it. It will take some of the pressure off you. And that pressure produces anxiety, which makes it harder to find this, excuse me, sweet spot, you know. Um, but still the answer is the same. Agree with the gospel. Learn about what God has given you in Christ and agree with it and speak it to him in your fellowship and that will strengthen you to go through whatever you need to go through. Your life may be a disaster. We're not talking about situations when it, when it comes to that walking in the spirit. We're talking about what is your perception of God in all this? Do you think God's mad at you? And do you think that because your kid is really a struggle... You are not going to be blessed or God isn't going to talk to you or he's holding it against you and he's angry with you because maybe you lost your cool. Maybe some of what your kid is is your fault. What are you going to do? The blood of Jesus and the cross of Christ is the answer. The cross of Christ is so great because it means that my history is not the basis on which God is dealing with me. Remember, David said, if you shall account iniquities, who shall stand? We're, thank God he does not account our iniquities and hold them against us. He deals with us in Christ and for his sake, with the blessing of Christ. The only thing about it for us is we need to walk by faith and believe. And what that does is that gives us the basic rest. I believe Christians are blessed and provided for. They are. But they don't always realize it because their mind isn't renewed and they don't see God's hand in their situation. They don't know how to communicate with God on the basis of telling God what the Spirit agrees to and speaking in harmony with God about it over their whole life and everything. That's the key to the Christian life. I believe, therefore I speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Lord, let my meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your eyes. Well, the best way to make them acceptable is to what's accepted is the offering, which is Christ. All right? Have the right thing in your hands when you come to God, Christ. Everything he's done for you. Relate to him on that on a daily basis and be at peace. And then as you're at peace, you'll be able to let go of the fact that your kid is the way he is because of who you are, you know. Uh, see, my kid is the way he is in some senses because the way I am. And I've, I'm a sinner. And so I've ha handled certain situations as a sinner would. So now what am I going to do? Well, the natural realm says, well, you're going to have to reap every bit of harvest you sowed. Uh, you know, but the blessing in Christ is, uh, no, he became a curse for me and the blessing is upon me. I'm crucified with Christ. My history is not what's going to govern how things go forward with my son. God's grace in Christ is. And there's a lot of Christian parents who grow old and their kids become atheists and become awful, you know, 
and the parents are bitter and miserable. And I believe it's because at the basic level, the parents never knew anything about grace. They just, it was all performance. And that when they yelled at their kids, their own, they were yelling at themselves because their own condemnation amplified everything. You know, they were yelling at themselves and blaming themselves and their kids in their view was a reflection of their failures. And so they really took it out on the kids and the kids intuitively knew that this was who God was to their parents. He's a hard taskmaster. And if you fail, you're going to have to eat it. You know, that's not who he is. He knows that we are lepers, prostitutes, adulterers, sinners, ungodly. And yet he's chosen to bless us. If we can get a hold of that, that's really the message of the cross is that he crossed out me and now Christ is here. And everything is on the basis of who Christ is in my life. I want that to be manifested. And you know, no, I don't see it with my eyes, but I believe it by faith. I've got situations in my life, just like you do, that are probably out of order, that I can't fix, and in some ways are the consequences of my own stupidity in the past. However, I have peace with God. And those things do not plague me every day anymore. Um, I'm looking to him, and I know that he's working it all together for my good. He takes even the broken things and puts them into my into the story of his redemption. Okay, I gotta go. I hope this was a comforting word. Just keep balancing. I'll I'll say something, and then I'll have a conversation, and then we'll I need to balance it out, you know. But I keep teaching the same thing. The teaching isn't changing. We're just walking around this mountain looking at it from different angles. All right, take care.